हेलो एवरीबॉडी वेलकम टू मोडिस इंग्लिश क्लास टुडे वी आर स्टार्टिंग एन इंटरेस्टिंग पोएम व्हाट्स द नेम ऑफ द पोएम द नेम ऑफ द पोएम इज सॉलिटरी रिपर हु इज द राइटर राइटर इज विलियम वर्डस्वर्थ वन ऑफ द बेस्ट एवर नेचर पोएट्स इन द हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंग्लिश लिटरेचर एंड व्हाट्स द थीम ऑफ द पोएम so here the theme of the poem is nature loneliness simplicity common people what does the poet want to tell what the message what's the message given by the poet so the message is that the poet wants to give the message that here the solitary reaper who is a common girl who is a symbol of common man common woman ripping busy in her activity while she was ripping collecting grains producing music she singing a song she is singing a song and that song is really enchanted by the onlookers by the visitors so definitely we are going to read the poem solitary reaper written by william wordsworth what's the definition of william wordsworth's poetry according to william wordsworth poetry is a recollection poetry is spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings and emotions recollected in tranquility try to understand what is this spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings and emotions recollected in tranquility and here 100% the poet has proved in this poem the solitary reaper solitary means what single solitary means single one reaper a person a woman here a girl here who reaps reaping what is that reaping job cutting the grains collecting the grains so definitely the poem highlights natural scenery natural surrounding as well as the scenic beauty of the place and here the poet wants to prove that even if the theme of the poem is that the language is not understood by the poet the song in the language in which the song was sang definitely not understood by the poet not understood by the poet because that girl was scottish but definitely here the poem the poet wants to give the message that it transcends the cultural barrier the physical barrier so here the poet wants to tell you that art here the poetry is the art which transcends the cultural barrier the linguistic barrier and here the poet has created music out of words so this is one of the finest poems finest lyrical ballads lyrical ballads which has impressed and this poem is an inspiring poem poem which really inspires william wordsworth let us begin the poem first stanza and now i am explaining the first stanza all of you look at what's the first stanza behold her single in the field yon means that yon means that solitary highland lass what is the meaning of lass lass means girl lad means boy lass means boy so first two lines look at the line first stanza behold her behold means watching behold her single in the field alone in the field single means alone in the field yeah yon yon means that solitary highland lass highland at particular place ripping and singing look at the two verbs the girl was singing the girl is ripping so two actions going on one action you know ripping the other action you know singing ripping and singing by herself stop here or gently pass so this is the advice to the visitors by the poet what, what's the advice that those visitors passing by that land they should stop here or they should pass gently not to disturb the girl not to disturb the music why 
बिकॉज द गर्ल इज सिंगिंग ए सॉन्ग वाइल प्रोड्यूसिंग म्यूजिक स्टॉफ हियर अर्जेंटली पास एलोन सी कॉट एंड बाइंड द ग्रेन वॉट सी इज डूइंग सी इज कॉटिंग द ग्रेन एंड बाइंडिंग देम बाइंडिंग देम एंड सिंग्स ए मेलंकोली स्ट्रेन वॉट डू यू मीन बाय मेलंकोली मेलंकोली मीन सैड वॉट द मीन मीनिंग ऑफ स्ट्रेन सॉन्ग सो द सॉन्ग हाईलाइट सम सोरोफुल थीम some sad theme and sings a melancholy strain oh listen for the vale profound vale means here valley profound means complete complete so the valley is complete full f u l l full full with what is overflowing with the sound so this is the use of hyperbole this is the use of hyperbole what do you mean by hyperbole hyperbole is that expression which is beyond exaggeration more than exaggeration more than unrealistic so it is not realistic so that's why the poet wants to highlight that the entire valley is overflowing with the sound of the girl what's the sound the music produced by the girl and we are moving towards the next stanza let us move the next stanza highlights what does the next stanza highlights now i am moving to the second stanza and all of you look at the second stanza what does it highlight let me tell the first line no nightingale did ever chant so c h u n t so that's actually the old english word and what's the new english word chant chant means utter so what's here is a comparison metaphor direct comparison it's without use of as well as or as or like look at the line no nightingale did ever chant more welcome notes to weary bands of travelers in some shady hunt among arabian sands so definitely here the poet using metaphors to compare the songs of the lad the songs of the lass the songs of the girl with the songs of the nightingale and the poet is saying that nightingale cannot sing such a beautiful note even the songs of the girl is more beautiful than the nightingale this is the line more welcome notes to weary bands of travelers the travelers who were moving in arabian nights in arabian sands look line arabian sands among arabian sands a voice so thrilling never was heard according to the poet the voice of the girl was so thrilling so enchanting so mystic that it was never heard before look at the music look at the song look at the beauty so definitely that song was never heard before according to poets emphatic lines look at line a voice so thrilling never was heard in spring time from the cuckoo bird so here again another metaphor so the song of the girl song of the lass is compared to the song of the nightingale in the first comparison in the second comparison song of the cuckoo all of you know in indian region cuckoo is a singing bird in foreign country nightingale is a singing bird even these two these two birds can produce such a beautiful note in comparison to the song of the girl comparison to the highland lass next line in spring time from the cuckoo bird breaking the silence of the seas and the farthest and the farthest and the yes in spring time from the cuckoo bird breaking the silence of the seas among the farthest hebrides what is the meaning of hebrides so here it is chain of islands in the scotland shore because all of you know the theme of the poem is about a scotland scottish girl scottish girl who is that girl the poet was on a tour to scotland and the maximum wordsworthian poetry is like that visit to the nature accompanied by your sister dorothy all of you know so that is another interesting poem that is daffodils so that is the same theme so loneliness is there solitariness is there alone and that highlights the companion with nature the beauty of nature so a voice so in this stanza the poet compares the voice the song of the girl 
with the song of the nightingale and the cuckoo. Now I am moving to the next stanza. Let us see. And what's there in the next stanza? Third stanza. I am moving to the third stanza. Now all of you look at the third stanza. What's the meaning? And what does the explanation tells you? So now I have selected the third stanza. Look at it. Here it is. Will no one, will no one tell me what she sings? That is the first line of the third stanza. What is the meaning? <coughs> According to the poet, no one, no one can tell what is the theme of the song. According to the poet, will no one tell me what she sings? Perhaps the plenty number flow, sad note is flowing, sad note is flowing, sorrowful note is flowing. For old unhappy far off things, perhaps the girl is singing of some old unhappy things, sorrowful things, far off things and battles long ago or perhaps about some battles, about some battles or is it some more humble lay or is it some humble lay, what is the meaning, so look at line or it's about a humble story or it's about a humble story. Familiar matter of today, another choice is there or it's a familiar matter, day to day matter. So the song, why does the poet say that? Because the poet is not aware of the Scottish language. The girl is singing in Scottish language and here language is a barrier to the poet. But poet can apprehend, poet can comprehend the message in a better way and battles long ago. Is it some more humble lay, familiar matter of today? So, there are four choices. So, the girl might be singing of a old battle, sorrowful things or a common thing or a familiar matter of today. Some natural sorrow, loss or pain. It might be the personal sorrow. It might be some kind of pain of the girl. It might be some natural sorrow that has been and may be again. So, third stanza highlights the theme of the song. The poet is unaware of the theme, but according to the guess that the theme may be about some old battles or it may be some personal sorrow or it may be like that. So, this is the theme. Now, I am moving, I am now I am moving to the next stanza. Let us see what is there in the next stanza. Whatever the theme, whatever the theme, the maiden sang as if a song could have no ending. Now I am selecting the next stanza. All of you look at it. And here it is going. All of you look. So the fourth stanza, how does it look? Whatever the theme, the poet is telling, the poet is telling whatever the theme, the maiden sang. Maiden means here the girl. The maiden sang as if a song could have no ending. It is another hypo, hyperbolic line. What is the hyperbole? No ending. Is it possible that song can have no ending? But here the poet is saying that the, it's a never ending song. It's a never ending song. I saw her singing at her work and over the sickle bending. Sickle in the instrument through which the girl is cutting the corn. I listened motionless and still and I mounted up the hill. So, poet was having the ear towards the song. The poet listened motionless and still. What is the manner in which the poet observed the song? motionless and still the music in my heart I bore long after it was heard no more so that was printed in his heart even if that song was not live but the poet can hear it again and again so definitely the poem highlights lot of things so these are the four stanzas each stanza contains eight lines so this is a marvelous poem which highlights Shakespeare's which highlights Wordsworth motto. What is the motto of Wordsworth? William Wordsworth. The motto is nature. Motto is, motto is common people. And the solitary reaper highlights the song, the music, which is really enchanting. So definitely, thanks a lot for watching this poem. In my next class, I will give you the explanation and some other notes. Thanks a lot.